Hello viewers, welcome to Nature Academy. In the last lecture, we have discussed about the Coulomb's force. In this lecture, we are going to discuss about the electric field and the derivation of the Gauss's law. If a charge lies at a point, the surrounding space of this charge is not empty. The space is filled with something which is unknown. What is that? Generally in the physics, if we have the unknown thing, then we try to measure or calculate it in some systematic way. Measuring means to know the numerical value along with the unit. We also try to name the unknown. Then it becomes like a physical quantity. So here also, the surrounding area of a charge is not empty and it is filled with something and this can be experienced by another charge. People came with the concept of some field lines and the unknown thing around the charge must be the electric field. Then how to calculate this electric field? If we have a charge Q and we are asked to calculate the electric field of this charge at a point of uh, distance r from this q. This is q and here we have to calculate what is the electric field and this point is at the distance r from this charge. Then what to do? Now how to calculate this electric field? To do this we choose a small test charge, te uh, small positive test charge. Then we place the small positive test charge at this point. Now we will calculate the Coulomb's force on this small test charge due to the source charge Q. We know how to do it. F bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught source charge and test charge multiplication of these two charges over R square and this is the direction of that force R cap. Calculate the force per unit charge. E bar is equal to F bar over Q. This is the test charge what we have chosen before. This is the way to calculate the electric field. E bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught capital Q small q over R square R cap over the test charge. That will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught source charge over R square and R cap. Once we calculate the force, we can calculate the electric field very easily. So here we have to know that in the force uh, formula, both the source charge and the test charge present and these two are unknown here. Whereas in the electric field, only source charge will be there. There, there is no test charge in the formula of the electric field. There is an interview question here. Why should the test charge is very small? Why should be small? The bigger charges may change or disturb the configuration of the electric field. Due to this reason, the test charge should be very very small. In some books, you may find that E bar is equal to limit Q tends to 0 F bar over Q. That means this test charge has to be very very small so that it will not disturb the electric field of the source charge. If we choose the test charge uh, very bigger one then it disturbs the electric field of the source charge. Then we may not able to calculate the electric field. Before calculating itself the electric field will be will get disturbed. The configuration will be changed. So we can't measure it. That is the reason. There is a continuous charge distribution and the char total charge is capital Q. Now at point P we have to find the electric field. What are the steps? These are the steps to calculate the electric field at the point P. Now bring a small charge Q to the point P. Then find the electrostatic force on Q due to the source charge. Then F bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught and test charge integral dq over r square and r cap. This can be written like this because this is the continuous charge distribution so dq can be written as integral rho dv. Now calculate the E bar electric field E bar from F bar by dividing it with q 
this is the test charge and this has to be all the time the positive charge only so e bar is equal to f bar over q that will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral rho dv over r square and r cap inversely if we know the electric field we can also calculate the force so, through this formula f bar is equal to q multiplied by e bar there is an interview question here if q is equal to 1 then this equation becomes f bar is equal to e bar this tells us that f bar should be equal to e bar that means force coulomb force is equal to electric field is it true is it true to say that electric field e bar is nothing but the force both are same the answer is in this particular case f bar and e bar are mathematically may be same that means the force and the electric field can be represented by a by the same vector which contains magnitude and direction both are same the same vector can be used to represent the electric field and the force f bar but physically these two are not same because this q is not just one it has to be one coulomb then the units of f bar and the e bar will be different so physically f bar and e bar are both are different mathematical representation only same here we can explain this with an example if we have five apples and we also have five oranges then since this is the since apples are five and oranges are five we can't say both are same right uh, apples are apples and oranges are oranges in the same way force is different and the electric field is different let us solve some problems the first one is Find the electric field a distance z above the midpoint between two equal charges q a distance d apart. Uh, let us look at the diagram. There is a charge q and another charge q is here. The distance between these two charges is d and at the midpoint uh, of these two charges and above the midpoint there is a point p and the distance of this point is z. So at this point we have to calculate the electric field let us see how the electric fields will be due to this charge the electric field will be in this direction and due to this charge the electric field will be in this direction and we are we have also assumed that x direction is in this direction and this perpendicular direction will be the z direction now we we know that e1 and e2 are there two electric fields are there so we have to add them to find out the resultant vector field these electric fields e1 and e2 has to be added together to find out the resultant electric field so the horizontal components will cancel each other and the vertical components only remains we can see by looking at this picture here this is the uh, this point p and electric field e1 is in this direction electric field e2 is in this direction and here uh, th this angle we can choose as theta we can also choose this angle as theta but I ha I have chosen this angle uh, theta then this this angle becomes theta and this angle and this angle are equal so this angle will be theta so this component the vertical component will be E1 cos theta and the horizontal component will be E1 sin theta so, uh, in the same way if we, if we look at the electric field E2, the vertical component will be E2 cos theta and the horizontal component will be E2 sin theta. Uh, here it may look like E2 sin theta and E1 sin theta are di different, but this Q and this Q are same, so E1 and E2 also will be same. The resultant, the magnitude of the resultant electric field will be uh, the summation of uh, two vertical components E is equal to E1 cos theta plus E2 cos theta and uh, this E1 and E2 are same this can these two can be calculated like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught Q over R square and this R is the distance between this Q and the point P uh, this, this R can be calculated very easily uh, 
that r is equal to square root of z square plus d by 2 whole square and this e is the electric field e is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r square and cos theta and this cos theta will be z over r and since this is the angle the adjacent side by hypotenuse uh, when we substitute this r value and cos theta value in the electric field e bar is equal to 2, 2 multiplied by 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q z by r cube and z cap we will get this this is the electric field substitute this r value e bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 q z over z square plus d d by 2 whole square whole power 3 by 2 and z cap this will be in the z direction only so uh, when z is very very longer than d much much higher than d uh, then uh, it, it, it means that we are looking at these two electric charges very far away then we can't see the distance between these two charges it looks like these two charges are clubbed together means it looks like uh, this, uh, this is the single charge of 2q then the electric field becomes uh, the d becomes 0 right then e bar is equal to since this d term will be 0 uh, then e bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2q over z square and z cap let us see the another problem find the electric field with magnitude and direction a distance z above the midpoint between equal and opposite charges plus or minus q uh, a distance d apart it looks like the previous question only uh, except the change is the charge at x equal to plus d over 2 is minus q so let us look at the picture now here these two charges are not equal uh, they are may be equal in the magnitude but the signs are different so this is uh, positive q and this is uh, negative q and the same as the previous question the point p at the distance z at uh, above the midpoint uh, this is in the z direction and let us assume this is in the x direction so let us look at the electric fields in the pictorial uh, diagram so here the electric field due to this charge will be in this direction because this is a positive charge so the electric field will be away from the charge so it will be in this direction in the same way due to this charge this is a negative charge right so the electric field will be in this direction if we look at the uh, freehand diagram this is the point p and this point p e1 will be in this direction and e2 will be in this direction if we take the uh, components of this e1 this one will be the e1 sin theta and this one will be the e1 cos theta in the same way e2 is in this direction the vertical component will be in this direction that is e2 cos theta and the horizontal component will be in this direction that is e2 sin theta so vertical components cancel each other uh, because these are two are in the opposite direction and the magnitude of uh, the two charges will be same the magnitude of these two charges is same right so q and q only the charge sign is different so these two are uh, uh, e1 and e2 will be same and so these two components cancel each other and these two uh, components will add together and the this will be in the x cap, x cap direction so e bar is equal to 2 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over r, r square sin theta and x cap so r is equal to r is uh, this direction uh, this distance r is this distance r is equal to square root of z square plus d over 2 whole square and sin theta can be written as d over 2 by r now if we substitute these two terms in the electric field it will be like e bar is equal to 2 multiplied by 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q d over 2 by z square plus d over 2 whole square whole to the power 3 over 2 and x cap so the electric field can be simplified like e bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q d and um, this two this two and this two get cancelled and over q d over 
z square plus d by 2 whole square whole to the power 3 over 2 and x cap. So the resultant electric field will be in this direction. Uh, what happens if the z is much much higher than d? Then in the same uh, in the same way like uh, in the previous question, d tends to zero. D term will be zero. Then e bar becomes uh, e bar is equal to one over four pi epsilon naught q d over z cube uh, and x cap. Let us see uh, another example. Find the electric field a distance uh, z above the midpoint of a straight line. Uh, straight line segment of length 2L that carries a uniform line uh, uniform line charge lambda. So let us look at the picture. So this is the line from here to here the charge is distributed and it's not like a point charge is it is continuous charge distribution on one dimension. So we assume this is the x direction and this is the z direction uh, somewhere at some point uh, at the some point above this will be z mm, and it is midpoint it is given like midpoint so this is the midpoint so we have to calculate the electric field due to this line segment at the point p so what to do now let us consider a small uh, line uh, small element then the length of this element will be dx and the distance of uh, this element from the midpoint v is x and if we draw a line from here to this point uh, due to this uh, charge element the electric field will be in this direction so the x now uh, vary from minus l to l because the length is given 2l in the question if the l if the length is given only l we have to take minus l over 2 to l over 2 but here length is given 2l so the limits will be minus l to l and then the this r can be written as square root of z square plus x square. Now the r bar can be written like uh, in this will be this is in this direction right. The horizontal component will be in the negative x direction and the vertical component will be in the z direction. So this can be written like this. If we take the unit vector of this r bar r cap is equal to and then this can be uh, divided by this magnitude of this r bar then minus x x cap plus z z cap by square root of x square plus z square if we calculate the electric field we can uh, do like this e bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral minus l to l uh, this is the charge of this element this is the charge density and this is the uh, charge uh, line element um, then the multiplication of this two will give the charge of this segment and uh, lambda dx over z square plus x square and the r cap r cap will be like this now the electric field becomes e bar is equal to lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, z cap integral minus l to l 1 over x z square plus x square whole power 3 by 2 dx minus x cap integral minus l to l x dx uh, over x square plus z square whole to the power 3 over 2. So these two integrals we have to solve. Here uh, this integral will become like a, uh, integral minus l to l dx by z square plus x square whole to the power of 3 by 2 that equal to it will be like this uh, x by z square square root of z square plus x square and the, the limits are from minus l to l. Here I am not giving the details of these integrals how to solve them because these are basics. So this will be this can be written like 2l over z square square root of z square plus l square. In the same way the value of uh, this integral will be 0. It can be calculated like this. If we substitute these two uh, va integral values in the e bar, then e bar is equal to z into lambda over 4 pi epsilon naught 2l over z square square root of z square plus l square and z cap. That will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 lambda l by z into square root of z square plus l square and z cap. Another example is 
Uh, find the electric field a distance z above one end of a straight line segment of length L that carries a uniform line charge lambda. Check that your formula is consistent with what you would expect for the case z is very very greater than L. So let us look at the picture. So this is the line segment. Unlike the previous case, now the point is at above z distance uh, from one point, one end point. So this is the point B. Here we are. We have to calculate the electric field. J just take a small segment. Uh, the charge of this small segment will be dQ is equal to lambda dx. And uh, let us consider this is an angle theta, and the distance from this point to this segment is r, and the length of this uh, uh, line segment is l, and uh, this this is the x direction, and this is the z direction. So E bar can be written as E x and x cap plus E z and z cap. E E z will be E cos theta. Uh, this is the vertical component, and E x will be the E sin theta, and this is the horizontal component. And cos theta will be z over r, and sin theta will be x over r. And r is equal to square root of x square plus z square. And the elect the magnitude of this electric field can be written as E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral 0 to L lambda dx over r square. The vertical component can be calculated. Uh, Ez is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral 0 to L lambda dx over r square cos theta. And if we substitute the uh, value of cos theta here, uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught z lambda integral 0 to L 1 over uh, x square plus z square whole power 3 over 2 and dx. So this can be evaluated and the value of this component will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda over z and L over square root of z square plus L square. In the similar way we can also calculate the component of uh, uh, x uh, that means horizontal component that will be minus 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral 0 to L lambda dx by r square sin theta and this can be evaluated like this the the value of this component will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda into 1 over square root of z square plus l square minus 1 over z unlike the previous case this x component is not going to be zero because uh, in the previous case uh, the point is at the midpoint so there is a symmetry so the uh, horizontal components can cancel each other but in this case this line segment is at one side so we are calculating at the end point so there is no symmetry here here there is no charge at all so the, uh, the horizontal components cannot cancel each other the horizontal component also remains here so e bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda over z and z by square root of z square plus l square minus 1 this is in the x direction the term in the z direction will be l over square root of z square plus l square so what happens if we look at uh, far away from uh, this uh, this line segment then z is very very greater than l then the total charge will be lambda into l the electric field e bar becomes like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, lambda L uh, over Z square and the X component will becomes will becomes zero here because here the Z is very very greater than L L will be zero and it is Z over Z and here we get the one one minus one will be zero only the Z component remains here uh, this will be L over square root of Z square only and L will be zero uh, so these two get cancelled each other and one z from here and another z from here so totally e bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda l over z square and z cap let us calculate the another problem find the electric field a distance z above the center of a square loop of side a carrying uniform line charge lambda let us look at the picture this is the square the length of each side is a and at the center and above the center there is a point P and the distance between from this point P to the center is Z. So we are going to calculate the electric field at this point due to the charge uh, at the uh, 
edges of this loop okay we have already calculated the electric field of a line segment and that too particularly at one particular end of that line segment that e bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda over z and z over square root of z square plus l square minus 1 and the, this component uh, is in the x direction and plus l over square root of z square plus l square and this term is in the z direction and we know that this is for a line segment and suppose this is the line segment and above this point due to this line segment this is the electric field but how to apply this one to the loop here just consider only this part for this case l here l becomes a over 2 and z becomes square root of z square plus a over 2 whole square because in the previous case the midpoint is exactly above the line segment but here it is not exactly above the uh, charge it is little far away uh, this distance is again a over 2 and this is again a over 2 we are considering only this line segment this part and in, in this case the L becomes L a over 2 and the z becomes square root of z square plus a over, a over 2 whole square because in the previous case uh, the point is exactly above the line segment but here it is above the center right so there is a distance from this point to this point that's why this z becomes uh, square root of z square plus a over 2 whole square the field due to one edge uh, E1 will be uh, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda by square root of z square plus a by 2 whole square. Uh, L becomes a over 2 square, um, by square root of z square plus a by 2 whole square plus a by 2 whole square. It becomes like that and the horizontal components will get cancel each other and only the vertical components remain and this 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 part is due to only this part so we have the entire segment right so double side so the two will come the electric field e1 uh, is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught a lambda over square root of z square plus uh, a square by 4 and also again square root of z square plus a square by 2. Though there are four sides and the vertical components only conspire even there. Uh, so it has to be multiplied by 4 cos theta. So cos theta is equal to z over square root of z square plus a square over 4 e bar is equal to e1 and 4 cos theta z cap uh, that equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda a over square root of z square plus a square by 4 and also square root of z square plus a square by 2 and 4 z uh, over square root of z square plus a square over 4 and z cap finally the electric field will become like this 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 4 lambda a z by uh, z square plus a square by 4 and square root of z square plus a square by 2 and z cap. Another problem is find the electric field a distance z above the center of a circular loop of radius r that carries a uniform line charge lambda. So look at the picture now and this is the loop and the radius of the loop is r from the center above the center there is a point p at the distance z. So at this point we are going to calculate the electric field due to this loop. Just take a small segment DL. The angle of this line segment will be d pi. If we draw a line from this segment to uh, this point the angle from here will be theta. Uh, due to this charge segment electric field will be in this direction. The components of this will, uh, electric field will be one horizontal component will be in the x direction and the vertical component will be in the z direction. This we have already assumed that 
uh, x cap is in this direction and z cap is in this direction. So this d by can be written as dl over r that means dl can be written as uh, dl is equal to r into d phi. So electric field E bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral 0 to 2 pi r lambda dl uh, over square root of r square plus z square whole square. This becomes like E is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral 0 to 2 pi lambda instead of this e dl we can write r d phi. Uh, here we have taken dl so limits also from 0 to 2 pi r because this is the circumference of the circle but when we change this dl into r d phi the limits also has to be changed. Now we are considering the variable as uh, angle and the complete angle in a circle will be 2 pi. So z it will the limits will become from 0 to 2 pi and lambda r d phi over r square plus z square and this can be written as 1, o, 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda r uh, by r square plus z square integral 0 to 2 pi d phi. This term will be just 2 pi and this is the electric field. So another angle theta is there right. So all horizontal components cancel and vertical components only conspire. So E bar can be written as E cos theta on Z cap. This cos theta will be uh, Z over square root of Z square plus R square because this is the angle and adjacent side will be Z and the hypotenuse will be square root of uh, this radius R square plus and uh, this distance Z square that equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda R 2 pi by r square plus z square and z by square root of r square plus z square and z cap. This can be uh, this becomes like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda 2 pi r and z uh, over r square plus z square whole power 3 by 2 and z cap. So this is the electric field uh, due to this loop. Another example is find the electric field at distance z above the center of a flat circular disk of radius r that carries a uniform surface charge sigma. What does your formula give in the limit r tends to infinity? Also check the case z is much much greater than r. So look at the picture now and this is the disk. Uh, previously we have calculated for a loop. Now this is the disk of radius r and again in this case also from the center above uh, there is a point B at the distance Z. At this point we are going to calculate the electric field due to this uh, disk of charge. So for loop it is calculated like E bar is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda 2 pi r Z uh, over r square plus Z square whole to the power 3 over 2 and Z cap. Now break this disk into rings of radius r and thickness dr and then the field of each ring can be calculated. Uh, total charge of this ring, suppose if we break this uh, disk into small rings and each ring we are going to calculate the charge on that ring. So that charge will be um, sigma and sigma is the charge density, uh, this is surface charge density and the length uh, will be the circumference of that ring that will be 2 pi r and this ring also contains the thickness of dr a small thickness dr so if we if we multiply these three terms together we will get the charge uh, lies on that ch uh, ring so here we, we only consider a loop and we won't worry about uh, the thickness of the ring so uh, so this term will be equal to this term when we compare these two terms we can get the instead of this lambda we can write just sigma into dr. So we can calculate the electric field of this ring E ring E, uh, e bar of ring is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, instead of lambda we substitute sigma on dr 2 pi r z uh, over r square plus z square whole to the power 3 by 2 and z cap. Now it looks like this right when we break the disc into smaller rings there will be like this and the distance vary from 0 to r that is the radius of the disc. 
So, if I, if we want to calculate the electric field of this disc at point P, then we have to integrate this term from 0 to R. So, E bar of disc is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, 2 pi sigma z integral 0 to R, R over R square plus Z square whole to the power 3 over 2 and dr. When we evaluate this integral, the electric field of the uh, disk can be calculated like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 pi sigma z of minus 1 square root of z square plus r square from 0 to r and this is in the z direction. So, this can be calculated like this. It will have two, com two terms in the z direction. What happens if r is much much greater than z? That means the disk is extended up to infinity. That means it will give the plane. So, the second term will be 0. This term will be 0 because r is much much greater than z. Electric field of the plane that will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught 2 pi sigma z cap. Okay. Now, that will be equal to sigma over uh, 2 epsilon naught and z cap. For a z is very very greater than r, now this direction, this length is much greater than this, then it is like we are looking at the disk uh, from far away. Then this term 1 over square root of r square plus z square be can be approximated as 1 over z uh, into 1 plus r square plus z square whole to the power of minus 1 over 2 and that can be written like this. Now, instead of this term, we can substitute 1 over z minus r square by 2 z cube. If we substitute this term in the electric field of the disk, uh, the in this, this one, then the electric field can be calculated like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught pi r square sigma and z square. So, finally, it will become like uh, this will be equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over z square. Another problem is find the electric field at distance z from the center of the spherical surface of radius r that carries a uniform charge density sigma. Treat the case z is less than r inside as well as z is greater than r outside. Express your answer in terms of the total charge q on the sphere. Let us look at the picture. It is the spherical shell. Inside of the shell, there is nothing. Only the charge is distributed on the surface. And for this spherical shell, we have to calculate the electric field inside and outside also. Uh, let us assume the directions. This is in the x, this is the x direction. This is the y direction, and this is the z direction. And take a small segment on the surface, and uh, uh, from uh, from origin, the radius of this uh, so small segment will be r and the ang this angle is theta and this angle um, if we take the projection of this uh, radius uh, in this direction this angle is pi <coughs> we can understand this from spherical polar coordinates uh, we can we will see uh, in brief about the spherical polar coordinates in the in some other video then this can be uh, assumed as delta and this is z direction Okay, next, so the horizontal components uh, cancel and E bar will be in the z direction. So, the charge of this small surface area element dq is equal to sigma into dA and sigma that uh, dA is the surface element r square sin theta d theta d pi. Uh, this r square can be uh, written as r square is equal to and this r square this r square can be calculated z minus r cos theta and this value is actually r cos theta and z minus r cos theta is this one and this is the r sin theta and this will be equal to this one so this is z minus r cos theta and this is the r cos theta we can calculate r square is equal to z minus r cos theta whole square plus r sin theta whole square. And if we evaluate this one, we will get r square is equal to z square plus r square minus 2rz cos theta. And then cos delta can be written as this is the delta angle. Cos delta will be this, this distance over r. 
and this is the z minus r cos theta and r is the square root of z square plus r square minus 2 rz cos theta. Theta and uh, phi, phi are varying and r is constant here. Uh, it is a spherical shell and the radius is fixed. Uh, only the theta and phi, these two only are varying. So e bar is equal to ez cos delta and z cap because all horizontal components cancel each other, only vertical components remain. So we can calculate this one as 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught integral sigma r square sin theta d theta d phi over uh, square root of r square plus z square minus 2 r z cos theta whole square and z minus r cos theta by square root of r square plus z square minus 2 r z cos theta we can uh, evaluate this integral. Uh, this is the double integral because we have d theta term and d phi term and if we evaluate this uh, this integral we can we will get like this and this integral will be 2 pi and uh, this integral has to be calculated. Uh, to do this let us assume uh, this cos theta is equal to u then du will be minus sin theta d theta and the limits also change accordingly if the, if limit lower limit is 0 then cos theta will be 1 if the upper limit pi no then for theta is equal to 1 u will be minus 1 so by using these values we can evaluate this integral value of this integral will looks like this and if we substitute this one in the electric field electric field will become like this so for z is very greater than r outside of the sphere we can uh, take like z is very very greater than r now ez becomes 1 over 4 pi epsilon na, 2 pi r square sigma over z square and this will become 1 and this is also becomes 1 because uh, z is much greater than r so this z over z and z over z will give 1 plus 1 this becomes like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught uh, 4 pi r square sigma over z square and z cap this is the electric field uh, outside of the sp uh, spherical shell and for z is less than r ez becomes zero because there is no charge inside the spherical shell so e bar is also becomes zero in the question it is asked that express your answer in terms of the total charge q on the sphere right here we have to look at term in terms of total charge so since it is a spherical surface the total surf the total surface area will be 4 pi r square and the char surface charge density is sigma and this product will be is nothing but the total charge so that will be like 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught q over z square and z cap uh, look at the uh, another example let us look at the question uh, which was asked in the CSIR net exam in the year 2012 December. So three charges are located on the circumference of a circle of radius R as shown in the figure below. The two charges Q subtended an angle 90 degrees at the center of the circle. The charge small Q is symmetrically placed with respect to the charges capital Q. If the electric field at the center of the circle is 0, then what is the magnitude of Q? And this is the figure given and these are the options. So A is Q over square root of 2, B is square root 2 and Q, C is 2Q and D is 4Q. So let us solve this question now. So look at this picture. Uh, when we have pictures like this, it would be better if we, if we draw a free hand diagram. See just consider this point and this is the same point. Whatever point is here and this is the point. So here is a charge Q and here is a charge Q. The angle between these uh, two uh, lines is 90 degrees and uh, another charge is subtended and that charge is small Q. Uh, so this is the Q and this is the Q and this is Q. In the question it is told that uh, the electric field at the center of the circle is 0. So here the electric field is 0. So uh, the electric field due to this 
चार्ज विल बी इन दिस डायरेक्शन द एलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ड्यू टू दिस चार्ज विल बी इन दिस डायरेक्शन एंड द एलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड ड्यू टू दिस चार्ज विल बी इन दिस डायरेक्शन अज्यूम दैट दिस एलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज ई वन दिस एलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज ई टू एंड दिस एलेक्ट्रिक फील्ड इज ई थ्री सो लेट एस डिफाइन द डायरेक्शन एंड दिस इज द एक्स डायरेक्शन वाई डायरेक्शन नेगेटिव एक्स डायरेक्शन एंड नेगेटिव वाई डायरेक्शन सिंस द एंगल बिटवीन दिस लाइन एंड दिस लाइन इज नाइंटी डिग्रीज वेन अनदर चार्ज इज सप्टेंडेड हियर we can take this angle as 45 degrees and this as 45 degrees since it is 45 degrees this angle will be 45 degrees and in the similar way the opposite angle to this angle will be again 45 degrees so now uh, we can write e1 bar as uh, the magnitude of this uh, e1 bar is due to this charge right so we name it as eq and Uh, the component will on the x direction will be sin 45 i cap and the negative uh, in the negative y direction the z uh, the another component the vertical component will be there so uh, eq cos 45 and z j cap so the components of this e1 will be one in this direction and another will be in this direction hence we can write the e1 bar is like this in the similar way e2 also we can write so the components of this e2 uh, vertical component will be in this direction and horizontal component will be in this direction so e2 can be written right like minus eq sin 45 i cap minus eq cos 45 degrees and j cap so the another uh, field e3 bar is equal to eq that is only in the y direction not in the x direction so we can write e q and j cap here we have to calculate what is e capital q and e small q and also at this center uh, in the question it is told that e bar uh, the total electric field is zero hence e bar can be written like e1 bar plus e2 bar plus e3 bar and th that is again equal to zero so if we add all these um, three vectors together these two uh, terms will cancel each other only this term remains and this term remains so this can be written like minus 2 eq cos 45 j cap and plus eq j cap is equal to 0 so it will be like minus 2 eq 1 over square root of 2 plus eq equal to 0 this eq is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon not q over r square this is the radius of the circle so the electric field due to this charge electric field this uh, due to this charge will be same the electric field uh, due to this charge will be 1 over 4 pi epsilon not q over r square small q over r square so if we substitute this eq and this eq in this equation so we'll get minus square root of 2 1 over 4 pi epsilon not q over r square plus 1 over 4 pi epsilon not q over r square uh, when we solve this equation we will get minus uh, 2q plus q equal to 0 so the capital q is equal to small q over root 2 so the answer is a let us look at another question uh, this question was asked in the csr exam 2016 december term so the charge per unit length of a circular wire of radius a in xy plane uh, with its center at the origin is lambda is equal to lambda not cos theta where lambda not is a constant and the angle theta is measured from the positive x axis the electric field at the center of the circle is four options are given we are going to solve this problem now so this is the circular wire and uh, see let us assume the two directions this is in x direction and this is y direction let us consider a small element of length dl and it makes an angle d theta at the center lambda is given lambda is equal to lambda not cos theta and this dl can be written in uh, like a into d theta so the charge on this small line segment dq will be lambda dl and that can be like lambda lambda not cos theta ad theta so d bar is equal to uh, the 
electric field due to this small element at the center uh, can be written like de bar is equal to minus dex cos theta i cap and minus dey sin theta j cap. So here this dex and dey will be same the magnitudes will be same and this can be written like this and uh, we substitute these terms here and we integrate it then total electric field at the center can be calculated e bar is equal to minus integral 0 to 2 pi 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda naught cos theta a d theta over a square and cos theta i cap minus integral 0 to 2 pi 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught lambda naught cos theta a d theta, a d theta by a square sin theta j cap these integrals we have to solve now e bar can be uh, written like this so uh, this cos square can be written cos 2 theta plus 1 over 2 and this term can be written like sin 2 theta by 2 uh, when we solve these integrals individually this integral will uh, lead to pi and this integral will lead to 0 so when we substitute these two values in this uh, electric field the electric field can be minus lambda naught by 4 pi epsilon naught a and pi uh, that only the uh, ith component remains here so this is the answer minus lambda by uh, minus lambda naught by 4 epsilon naught a i cap so where is the answer a a is the answer uh, so far we have discussed about uh, the electric field and how to calculate it and there is an another concept which is a hypothetical concept that is electric field lines. Uh, to find out the strength of the charge and the intensity of the electric field uh, we use this concept of electric field lines. So the magnitude of the field is indicated by the density of the field lines and the field lines uh, are very strong near the center where the field lines are close together and if we go f away from the charge the field lines will be weak because they will be away from each other so positive charge will be outwards uh, it will emerge from the charge um, the field lines of the negative charge converge it will be inwards the field lines like start from positive charge and end at the negative charge electric field lines extend up to infinity they just don't disappear in the middle or vacuum uh, they just don't disappear suddenly so the density of the lines will be equal to total number of lines over area this can be written like n over 4 pi r square so we can say that the density of lines is proportional to 1 over r square it is not 1 over r the density of the lines will be proportional to 1 over r square or the density of lines is inversely proportional to r square so electric field lines never cross each other this is another property if they cross what happens at the intersection point it will show two directions uh, the electric field will show two directions at the intersection point this is not acceptable physically it ha it shouldn't be correct so the electric field lines and also open curves. If two charges are placed together then the field lines originate at the positive charge and terminate at the negative charge. They look like this. This is a positive charge and this is a negative charge. Field lines will emerge from the positive charge and converge to the negative charge. What happens if we two positive charges bring together? then at, at this point the electric field lines never cross each other they try to repel each other e similarly even for the negative charges the field lines look, look like this if we uh, take a combination like this four charges are together uh, plus q minus q minus q and plus q i think uh, the field lines may look like this Fr from positive charge electric field lines will emerge and at the negative charge field lines will converge ha same thing happens here field lines will converge here and uh, here field lines will uh, emerge from this charge so we'll talk about the electric flux now 
so flux is equal to electric field and multiplied by area uh, this flux is nothing but the uh, total number of electric field lines okay now this e bar uh, this electric field is e bar and the area can be written like a bar the dot product can be taken here the the dot product of electric field and the aerial vector will give the flux for a continuous charge distribution or for a closed surface the total flux can be calculated by doing the integral of e bar dot ds bar we have a question we have to understand that uh, what is the direction of uh, area area is like a plane right it spreads in two dimension then what is the direction of this area what is the direction of uh, uh, aerial element the direction of area is normal to this plane if the small surface is like this the normal element will be in this direction that can be represented by n cap and similarly for this area normal element will be in this direction for this area normal element will be in this direction so we can write like uh, ds is the amount of the area and the n cap is the unit normal of that area a multiplication of these two means product of these two not just normal product like uh, numerical value and the direction value it it is like a vector now that vector can be represented like ds bar so this n bar is the unit normal flux will become like uh, integral e bar dot n cap and ds here uh, this is since it is a dot product we can write integral magnitude of e bar and magnitude of this unit normal cos theta ds this is a unit and it will be equal to 1 and integral e cos theta ds so it tells us that if this theta is um, zero like if electric field and the uh, direction of the area if both are in the same direction that theta will be zero then the flux will be maximum whereas if these two are perpendicular to each other like this is the electric field direction of the electric field and this is the direction of the aerial element uh, then the flux passing through this area will be zero uh, that means uh, for electric field the for the direction of the electric field aerial element has to be uh, perpendicular and the direction of the aerial element will be parallel then the flux will be maximum if the surface is like this to the electric field and the direction of the electric field and the normal of the area will be perpendicular to each other uh, flux cannot enter into this area suppose if we have an arbitrary arbitrary closed surface uh, like this and each part any part may not be same so you can see here this part will uh, will be this direction and this area part will have this direction this aerial part will have this direction this will be different but if we consider a symmetrical sphere or sp uh, spherical surface then there will be a symmetry even in the directions also we need to understand what is planar angle and solid angle let us consider a uh, circle take a sector small sector and the angle of this sector will be theta and the length of this sector will be l take another bigger one bigger sector the angle will be theta and again the length is from here to here if we uh, take this is theta 1 l1 and this is theta 2 and this uh, bigger length will be l2 uh, if we write uh, theta 1 over l1 that should be equal to theta 2 over l2 if we take any sector this ratio should be constant so if we complete the full circle the full angle will be 2 pi and the full length will be perimeter that will be equal to 2 pi r and this 2 pi 2 pi get cancel each other and theta can be written like l over r so this is the planar angle so we now consider a spherical surface a sphere or spherical shell whatever it is it should be a spherical surface 
then take a small aerial element of this spherical surface the direction of this spherical surface will be e n cap and now connect all the boundaries of this surface like this all boundaries at the origin uh, then the angle we this angle is different to planar angle so we will represent this angle with d omega if we take uh, the ratio of d omega and ds uh, here we have taken the ratio of uh, theta or l here we will take the ratio of d omega and the uh, this element ds then for a complete sphere uh, or co complete spherical surface the entire solid uh, the entire angle will be 4 pi and the entire surface area will be equal to 4 pi r square uh, omega can be written like a over r square this is called the solid angle okay if we take r cap in this direction if this r cap and n cap in the same direction then only the flux can enter maximum flux can enter through this area now uh, this d omega the solid angle can also be represented with the vector notation this can be written like ds bar dot r cap over r square this is r cap this r cap instead of this r cap we can substitute r bar by r so when we substitute this one the solid angle d omega will become like ds bar dot r bar by r cube suppose if this r bar and this n cap uh, is not in the same direction for uh, for surfaces like this the maximum flux cannot enter through this small areas so vector notation of solid angle uh, d omega is equal to ds bar dot r bar over r cube. So this is a scalar but uh, here this uh, area element and this r cap are the vectors. The, since it is a dot product we will get the scalar quantity. So this can be written like ds r cos theta over r, uh, r cube and r will cancel each other this can be written like ds cos theta r square so whenever we uh, see ds cos theta or r square it is nothing but the solid angle so theta is the angle between r bar and uh, unit normal of the surface if theta is zero the solid angle uh, the solid angle will be maximum there is an interview question here why the direction of area is normal to it so if we want to decide the direction of anything it would be uh, any one of the x y or z or combination of these three directions right so suppose take a uh, sm small surface and define uh, directions like x y and z and this uh, surface is in the x y plane so if we choose a direction like this or parallel to x y plane we can choose in any direction right so there are uh, infinite vectors it is not unique uh, if we take in the three dimensions suppose here even choosing like this like this we don't know the, it, it is not unique we have infinite ways so so z is the unique one this is the only direction which is unique even if I take a perpendicular to it, it will be this one. If you take perpendicular to this one, it will be this direction only. But uh, choosing other than z direction will be ambiguous. So to avoid such kind of confusion, uh, the direction of this area will be perpendicular to um, aerial element. Uh, of course, you can ask a question that there is an another uh, direction even in the z, right? Opposite direction. This can also be acceptable, no? So, z has two ways. Unique, but two ways. But anyway, for a closed surface, we always consider outwards. So, a closed surface with a charge Q uh, enclosed in it. It is a closed surface and charge Q is enclosed in it electric flux uh, passing through this closed surface can be calculated like whatever is the electric field and the area a bar 
the multiplication of this a bar and e bar will be the flux uh, the let the charge is at the origin consider this charge is at the origin and a small surface is at the boundary this one and e bar can be written like q over 4 pi epsilon naught r cap by r cube at this point flux d phi is equal to e bar dot ds bar to find out the flux passing through the entire surface we integrate on both sides then the total flux can be calculated that will be equal to integral q over 4 pi epsilon naught r cap over r cube and ds bar and this can be uh, this q and 4 pi epsilon naught can come out of the integral then q over 4 pi epsilon naught integral r bar dot ds bar over r cube what is this this is the solid angle so q over 4 pi epsilon naught integral d omega this will be equal to 4 pi and it will be equal to q over epsilon naught so for any closed surface we if we calculate the flux passing through that closed surface it should be equal to q over epsilon naught and the q is nothing but the charge inside of that closed surface this is this can be written like integral e bar dot ds bar is equal to q over epsilon naught this is the gauss law for a closed surface charge q is inside uh, there is a flux surrounding that charge right so if we consider a closed surface like this and consider a small element uh, the area element is in this direction uh, here the electric field may be in this direction so the flux will be depends upon the angle between this n cap and uh, that e bar also if we integrate for entire closed surface by using the integral we can define like this if we have many charges like this and then we do the same thing uh, then it can be written like integral e bar dot ds bar is equal to 1 over epsilon naught and summation of all charges inside the char inside the closed surface uh, this picture looks like uh, coronavirus and uh, this should be like uh, equal to 1 over epsilon naught summation i is equal to 1 to n q i so from Gauss's law integral e bar dot ds bar is equal to q over epsilon naught uh, by using the Gauss's divergence theorem there is a theorem in the vector calculus we can look into it and this d bar is the volume element and then this integral can be converted this is the surface integral here ds bar means here we have we have two integrals this can be converted into volume integral this is a volume element and this integral will be like three integrals now this can be written like by using the gauss divergence theorem integral del bar dot e bar and dr bar is equal to q over epsilon naught and uh, this q uh, for a continuous charge distribution this total charge q can be also written like integral rho of r bar and dr bar if we just look at the uh, inside part inside of the integral uh, terms this term will be equal to this term and that can be written like del bar dot e bar is equal to rho of r bar over epsilon naught del bar dot e bar is equal to rho over epsilon naught and this is the differential form of the Gauss's law uh, and this is also first law of Maxwell's equations and if we look at the integral form of the Gauss's law it will be like integral e bar dot ds bar that equal to q over epsilon naught this is the integral form of the Gauss's law let us solve a problem now calculate the charge contained in the surface if 10,000 field lines are entering and 25,000 field lines are leaving the surface look at the picture 10,000 field lines are entering 25,000 are leaving we are gaining right that means there is a charge inside it so we have to calculate the charge so net lines will be 25,000 minus 10,000 that will be equal to 15,000 so there is a source inside the surface and that flux will be equal to integral e bar dot ds bar that will be equal to q enclosed in the surface over epsilon naught 
and uh, this flux uh, net fl lines will be 15000 that will be equal to q over epsilon naught now the q will be 15000 epsilon naught another example suppose the electric field in some region is found to be e is equal to k r cube and r cap in spherical coordinates k is some constant find the charge density rho find the total charge contained in a sphere of radius r centered at the origin from the differential uh, form of gauss's law we know that del bar dot e bar is equal to rho over epsilon naught and we can write like uh, uh, rho equal to epsilon naught del bar dot e bar uh, in the spherical polar coordinates del term can be written like this in the spherical polar coordinates this del term can be written like 1 over r square uh, dou over dou r of r square so we have to evaluate this term then it will become like this epsilon naught 1 over r square k dou over dou r of r, r to the power 5 finally it will be like uh, 5 epsilon naught k r square now we are going to calculate find the total charge contained in a sphere of radius r right so we are going to calculate the total charge centered at the origin so to calculate the total charge we use the integral form of the gauss's law integral e bar dot ds bar is equal to q enclosed over epsilon naught and this total charge q enclosed is equal to epsilon naught integral e bar dot ds bar that equal to epsilon naught e integral ds uh, that will be equal to epsilon naught k r cube 4 pi r square uh, since it is a spherical surface the total surface area will be 4 pi r square when when we substitute this one it will be the total charge will be 4 pi epsilon naught k r to the power 5 we can also calculate from the direct integration the q enclosed in it will be integral rho d tau this d tau is the volume element and it will contain three integrals uh, the volume element will be r square dr sin theta d theta d phi how this uh, term is why this term is like this and why three integrals will be there all the details will be discussed in the preliminary mathematics of electromagnetic theory so we can write this is equal to 5 epsilon naught k integral 0 to r r to the power 4 dr 0 to pi sin theta d theta integral 0 to 2 pi phi uh, if we evaluate these three integrals it will become like 4 pi epsilon naught k r to the power phi let us look at another example a charge q sits at the back corner of a cube as shown in the figure what is the flux of e through the shaded side so this is the charge and uh, here we have to in this surface what is the flux we are going to calculate now the, the charge is at the corner right and uh, it is not enclosed so we have to enclose it uh, because see some part of the flux lines will be outside the only some part of the flux lines will be in this queue so we have to enclose this charge so uh, just consider another uh, eight cubes like this this is one cube this cube is given consider uh, seven cubes and place like this and now the charge this charge is enclosed so think of uh, this cube as one of the eight surrounding the charge integral e bar now the total flux uh, on this entire surface will be q over epsilon naught the bigger cube now it is like a bigger cube right this bigger cube has six equal faces and hence the flux will be uh, the flux in the each phase will be q over 6 epsilon naught this phase contains q over 6 epsilon naught this phase contains q over 6 epsilon naught and this phase contains six, uh, q over 6 epsilon naught now in this uh, phase uh, the fourth part we require this part right this is the shaded part so the required shaded area is the fourth, fourth part of it hence the flux will be q over 6 epsilon naught over 4 that will be equal to q over 24 epsilon naught uh, this is the flux through this shaded area 
let us look at uh, a question which was asked in the csr exam uh, 2015 december consider a charge q at the origin of three dimensional coordinate system the flux of the electric field through the curved surface of a cone that has a height h and a circular base of radius r as shown in the figure so we have to calculate the flux through this lateral surface and the th four options are given uh, in this example also the charge is at the bottom and it is not enclosed completely so this side it is open right try to enclose it that is the main point in to solve this question so symmetry is preferable uh, to enclose it we can't choose some this uh, some arbitrary shape it would be better if we choose the symm uh, symmetry hence take another cone in uh, which is reverse to it like this now the charge is enclosed these two cones this cone and this cone uh, will share the flux equally so the total flux is actually integral e bar dot ds bar is equal to q over epsilon naught uh, this is from gauss's law so it is shared right between two cones so the required flux will be half of it so q over 2 uh, epsilon naught so the answer is b thank you viewers for spending your time to watch this video if you like this lecture uh, please like it and share to your friends please subscribe our Na uh, nature academy channel you will get more videos like this in the forthcoming videos we are going to discuss about more problems and the concepts of electromagnetic theory very clearly okay bye